This is Philip Tracy, editor at RCR Wireless News Industrial IoT 5G. Welcome everybody to IoT in Action, the TV show where we look at real world IoT deployments to try to get rid of the ambiguity of that term, Internet of Things. So today with me, I have Macario Namey. He is the head of IoT strategy at Cisco Jasper. Macario, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So before we get into some of the case studies that uh, we were looking over earlier, um, could you just give a brief overview of what Jasper does and um, what sort of solutions it offers other enterprises? Certainly. So uh, J Jasper, now Cisco Jasper, has been in the business of helping companies launch and manage and monetize their connected devices on mobile networks all around the world for the past 10 years. We support over 6,000 enterprises for their IoT deployments across a whole different multitude of different industries, use cases, device types. Um, basically, anybody that's looking to really connect those devices, we give them the tools to be able to, to, to manage them, to get them up and running on the network, to be able to control them, to be able to diagnose when problems uh, happen, uh, to make sure that they are up and running at all times. Great. And now going on to the, the case studies, um, the first one we're going to talk about is a, a smart factory case study with mm -hmm. ABB. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with them, they are a uh, manufacturing company out of Switzerland. They're uh, robotics manufacturing, very big company. Um, can you talk about what they were trying to do and how Cisco Jasper was able to help them? So, you know, in the, in the manufacturing space, uh, the number one thing uh, you want to do is to eliminate downtime. Every minute of downtime for an automotive, uh, automobile manufacturer, for example, costs them $27,000 in lost revenue. It's extraordinarily expensive. And so if you're a manufacturer of, of, of large goods, and we'll stick with the car example, then you, know, you have to make sure that that factory line is constantly going. And that's not just what you do as the factory owner, but you're reliant on the suppliers of the machines within that factory to be able to do their jobs. And one of the largest providers of manufacturing robots is ABB. And we've been working with them now for several years. And what they really wanted to do was to try and be able to remotely access uh, the robots, the performance of those robots on the manufacturing line so they could have better insights into whether they're up and running whether there is currently a problem, instead of sending a technician on site and plugging into a port to figure out what the problem could be, and more importantly, to start to build information and knowledge in real time to be able to predict when a robot may actually cause some kind of downtime before it actually occurs. And the goal here is really just completely zero downtime. It can't always be achieved, but that's certainly the intention that they were looking to try and solve. So what they did is they then, um, started to connect those robots and the simple connection of those robots is actually pretty challenging. First you have to instrument the robot to be able to collect information about how it's performing. Then you need to be able to co uh, connect those sensors to uh, a port that allows for the extraction of that data. And then you actually have to be able to put that port up on a network. In ABB's case, they chose the cellular network. And one of the key reasons why they chose the cellular network is because it was a lot easier for them to have an all contained unit than to necessarily have to rely on the local networks of their customer locations. Um, so this allows them to have an always available channel to be able to access the information about the performance of their robots, be able to do remote support of those robots, and to be able to try and uh, effectively eliminate downtime for their customers. Great, and so where, where was Jasper? Where, where does it fit in? Uh, with all of those elements you mentioned. Certainly. So, you know, when they, when, they, when they started to try and traverse the cellular network, that presented a whole series of complexity. These robots are all around the world. Uh, they, can, they have access to multiple different mobile operators around the world. And ABB needed to have a central place where they can come in and sort of manage all of that connectivity, be able to manage the provisioning of those services, uh, to be able to understand if the robots are not connecting, why is that? Is that something to do with the hardware? Is it something to do with the network? Um, to be able to contain the cost of using the cellular networks, which is, which is a, a, a pretty meaningful cost for them as they're sending over a lot of data. And they use 
the Cisco Jasper control center platform to be able to do that across a multitude of different mobile operators all around the world. We're deeply tied into their back office systems via APIs, so they could at any point in time through a singular interface be able to very quickly understand the health of those devices on the networks, the cost of using those networks, and ensuring that in fact they're performing and delivering the service experience that they intended when they sought to uh, embed the internet of things into their robots. Perfect, so this is about staying connected, making sure that doesn't cost too much. That's right. And making sure, and, and with that, making sure that their robots are up and running and before the, you know, something happens. That's exactly right, which is the ultimate outcome that they're seeking to achieve, not just for themselves, but ultimately for their customers. Great. Well, moving on to the second case study, um, the, the big talks about IoT right now are in automotive, and you all work with General Motors. Can you talk a little bit about what you do with them? Certainly. You know, we work with many car companies all around the world. Um, and one of the largest uh, uh, deployments of connected cars today is General Motors. Um, I think they're probably the largest number of connected cars on the road all around the world. Uh, we've been working with GM for several years now. And GM has done some very innovative things. Um, they were one of the first pioneers in connected cars uh, with their OnStar telematics product, uh, which basically allows for a consumer to be able to um, press a button and get concierge services, to be able to find the location of their cars if it's, in, if it's stolen, remote car start from an app, um, and uh, automatic crash notification so that if you are in an accident, that the not uh, ambulance or the authorities can be notified on your behalf, um, even if you can't actually reach your phone. Now what GM wanted to do is they had this OnStar um, uh, set of services uh, for many years. And then they said, you know what, we, the value of the, con of the connected car goes beyond just what we've been doing. Uh, and so now they, they've actually embedded uh, an, ent uh, an entire connected car strategy across the whole of General Motors uh, so that they expand beyond just concierge and safety and security services to actually putting an LTE Wi-Fi hotspot inside of every single vehicle that they ship in North America. So that as a consumer, you actually have full and unfettered access to, to 4G uh, LTE services. Uh, so you can keep, uh, in, uh, for the kids in the backseat on that long road drive, you can actually uh, keep them entertained with a always connected tablet. For people who are using um, trucks or vans to, uh, for work sites, they can have basically a, a hotspot that they are always available wherever they may be um, all around the world. And GM has now taken this and expanded this set of services into, uh, into Europe and uh, into other parts of the world as well. Now the way we've been working with them is, is that you know, for them being able to uh, deliver the kind of service experience that they're looking for uh, is, uh, takes a tremendous amount of orchestration between not just what the vehicle does, but also how it interacts with the network and how the network behaves appropriately to what the car is attempting to do. So if you could imagine being able to have an, an, an always available hotspot, you want to have an almost hotel-like experience where you can just turn it on and it's always available and you can choose to subscribe or not subscribe. Uh, you can choose different kinds of plans. It may be on or off at any given point in time. Uh, when cars, especially in Europe, go into different countries, you may have different roaming packages, roaming experiences. It may be available for certain kinds of countries. Um, the Wi-Fi uh, inside the vehicle may be turned on at the same time that the OnStar product is, is, is turned off and vice versa. And uh, even though you may have one SIM card and one modem inside the vehicle, you're going to have multiple different data streams with different policies and, and different ways that the network actually behaves. All of that is, is perhaps unglamorous, but absolutely essential to delivering the kind of service experience that they want to deliver for their customers, which is that it just simply works out of the box, completely easy uh, and totally seamless. And so the Jasper software platform is what enables that kind of orchestration between the car and the network and the back office uh, systems of General Motors so that they can deliver the kind of a service experience that they want. Great, thank you very much for, for talking about that. Um, you know, before we talk about what IoT can do, we need to make sure that it's user friendly, it's stable, and um, so definitely having a stable network is really one of the first things you need to accomplish. Yeah, you know, I, I think, I think uh, Phil, really the, the key is 
you know, the Internet of Things really isn't just about the things. Um, and it's very easy to get lost in the things. Um, and those can be a bit sexy, there's no doubt about it. But the truth is, it's really about the services that those things enable. And for many organizations, they have to think about what is the service experience that they want to deliver to their customers, to their partners, to their employees, whatever, whatever it is that they're actually trying to do, and then work backwards from there. And a lot of those technology questions are so easily answered. But if you lose sight of the fact that you're ultimately delivering a service, that's when we've seen most deployments actually fail. Interesting. Well, thank you for speaking with me today, Makaria. Thank you very much, Paul. We really appreciate the time. Thanks.